that's now 100%. It's true. It's been passed by the OAF. And plus a hydrogen. The procedure she had was called refractive lens exchange. Optical Express replaced the natural lens in her eye with a synthetic one. It's resulted in her being the one person in a thousand they warned who could have complications after surgery. So what happened after your operation? I had lots of halos, but I thought, well, this is early post-op. It's, it's going to settle down. When did you discover there was a serious problem with your eyesight? Um, it was early in January 2013 and I was driving down to Plymouth for the day and I had this half-moon shadow in my left eye. The half-moon shadow was getting bigger and progressing up my eye but I, I can't realise that I was having a retinal detachment which is not what you want to realise when you're driving at 70 miles an hour up the motorway. Julie feels the risks of surgery were not explained to her properly. Optical Express say they sent you in writing uh, a full list of all the possible complications four months before the operation. It was a three-sided piece of paper um, and you really needed someone to sit down with you to talk through those risks because it was full of um, the jargon that ophthalmologists would use and it's difficult to understand if you're not in that field. Optical Express says that all the potential risks were discussed with Julie in person and that her unaided vision was substantially improved by the surgery. It added that it examined Julie's eyes after surgery and that there was no indication of retinal tears or a detachment. In May, campaigners from a group called Optical Express Ruined My Life demonstrated outside the Cabot Circus branch in Bristol. The group has a website. Its 200 registered members discuss a range of concerns about Optical Express and other providers of laser eye surgery. We met a couple more disgruntled patients on the day. Suzanne Cobley had refractive lens exchange like Julie. They didn't say anything would go wrong. They said there may be a small, um, a small number of people might need a little bit of um, fine tuning um, that, um, you know, there wasn't very much that could go wrong, that I would be rid of all specs. Kath had laser eye surgery. Since I've been having problems with my eyes, I now have dry eyes for life, um, which I don't feel was mentioned to me enough. Um, I think in my consultation they said to me the worst thing that can happen is your prescription just goes back to normal, but it was really blasé. Um, and I now have ghosts in my eyes, and I've noticed in the last few months they've got really, really bad. Optical Express says Kath undertook a full and detailed informed consent process where the potential risks of the proposed procedure were discussed. It also says that Suzanne's medical notes show staff advised her she may need near vision spectacles for sewing and that this was repeated in the informed consent documents she signed and also in a video she viewed in the store. So how are the risks of eye surgery explained to customers at this branch? We decided to go undercover to see for ourselves how a laser eye consultation takes place here. We were taken to meet John Margetts. He is an optometrist here. Oh, that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. So you, you want to know what's what, basically? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, tell me what you know. Uh, not a huge amount. I was chatting to a colleague who said there were sort of three or four different options um, and sort of you know, forgive me, I can't remember the names there. Yeah, <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, say Mac from around. Yeah. He's been passed by the ORAF, Army Navy. Yeah. And he's now mandatory for the replacement of Harry in the F-35 anyway. Mm -hmm. So for the Apache, the country panel of pilots and goodness. Yeah. So does it work? Oh yeah. And yeah. No, no, does it last? The RAF have passed it because it lasts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, uh, he's 25 times more accurate than he lasts. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. You also get an improvement in your mid-peripheral sight, mm -hmm. which has been amazing for the RAF's fighter pilots. Okay. okay. So do they do the standard, do they? You have to have it. Yeah, it repeats it three or four times, doesn't it? So it's very deliberate. It's not a slip of the tongue once. Rob Johnston is an eye expert at Cheltenham General Hospital. We brought him in to look at our footage. So in the consultation with the optometrist, he starts off immediately by talking about 
Air Force and lots of molecular nonsense, 25,000 times stronger than super glue or something along those lines. Clearly there's a very deliberate attempt to baffle the, the patient with lots of science, some of which is clearly nonsense. The new visor systems that they use where you can see 40 miles away, the laser tracking systems that show off your corneas mustn't have a parallax error. Right. So you have to be lasered to match the visor. Yeah. So it's now called a biometric enhancement. It's wrong to give deliberately false information, and some of the information is deliberately false. During the hour-long consultation, John Margits didn't explain the risks once. <laughs> We were, however, shown a four-minute video, 42 seconds of which was devoted to explaining some of the risks. After it had finished, the assistant left us with a parting thought. I mean, that, and that's the thing. They give it to all our staff, free of charge. Mm. And um, most of the surgeons have treated their family as well. Is it so routine now, so safe? Uh, no, we were still a little confused, so we checked with Mr. Margetts once again on our way out. And so it's 100% safe? Yeah. Really, yeah. stating that any surgical procedure is 100% safe is not true. Some patients are unhappy after surgical procedures for a whole variety of reasons, minor or more serious, and that should be explained to them. <laughs> Of course, we had to double check with the RAF as to whether it's mandatory for pilots to have laser eye surgery. And of course, well, you guessed it, that's total and utter rubbish. John Margaret says he used to be in the RAF, but was certainly never instructed by Optical Express to make the comments he did about them. He also says he must have misheard the question about whether the treatment was 100% safe. He says he always explains the potential risks of the procedure. Optical Express says that our reporter did not complete the informed consent process which would also have included an examination and discussion with the surgeon. After the consultation, our reporter was given an information pack to take away to help him decide. It does explain the potential risks of laser surgery, however, it's full of information and medical terminology. For example, here's a paragraph that says Another possible complication is diffuse lemular keratopathy, or DLK, or another is central toxic keratopathy. We showed our footage to this MP, who's been campaigning for better regulation of high street laser eye surgery. The undercover footage that's been shown is shocking, absolutely shocking. But I have to say, I'm not surprised, because I've received example after example from different people who've undertaken the same experience over years and we've presented that before the government urging them to act so shocked but not surprised unfortunately optical express says it strongly supports further regulation that could meaningfully improve patient care next month julie will join other campaigners to lobby mps in parliament i wish i had never met anyone from Optic Express. I wish I had never gone through their doors. The need for regulatory reform of this multi-million pound industry is gathering pace. What we discovered at one Optical Express branch in Bristol will certainly raise important questions about some of the things customers are told before signing up to life-changing surgery. To get the latest on what's happening on Inside Out 